my lovely imps, we have been having a lot of discussions about the election uh, following the disastrous presidential debate, which was uh, disastrous for all parties involved, but were particularly disastrous for Joe Biden. Um, there has been so much discussion around it. Uh, in fact, I believe CNN, in their own words, called, uh, called it an aggressive panic among Democrats following the debate. So we've discussed it a lot. The world is discussing it a lot. It's a big issue right now. And I've been watching a lot of other content creators, streamers, social media presences, influencers, video makers of all types, um, uh, uh, I've been watching a lot of them and seeing what they have to say about it. And one thing that I've actually seen popping up a surprising amount is uh, the sentiment of, for, of fleeing the United States. Uh, you know, people basically saying, uh, uh, you know, get your passports, get ready to flee. Uh, people saying, oh, I don't have to worry about that. I'm going to flee. You all are the ones that are going to have to worry about that, so you better take it seriously. This is not new. This has been around for a while, but it's something I've seen an increasing amount of over the last couple of days. And I wanted to talk about it in as good faith as possible um, because, uh, uh, because I think that it's a complicated issue. And I think it's a serious issue despite the fact that it's kind of like memed, you know, right? Like uh, in America, it's almost a meme that, that when, people's, when, when your guy loses, a bunch of, a bunch of people go, ah, oh, I got to get out of here. And it's like, then go, you know? That happened when Trump happened. When when Trump lost, there were a bunch of Republicans being like, "We got to get out of here." But I think it is above and beyond a meme for certain people and in certain circumstances. Um, there have been and are currently uh, political situations where fleeing is a very valid consideration and perhaps even a necessary consideration. Um, I mean, an example, think of how many uh, Gazans are fleeing from Gaza right now uh, and how many cannot flee from Gaza. Now, obviously, we are not Gaza. The United States is not Gaza, and most people in the United States are not in any conditions that even remotely resemble Gaza. There might be some small group of people who live in such a horrible situation that it is it is close but for the vast majority especially if you're watching the stream you're not one of those people um but i want to talk about this subject because i i think it's good to get people's brain juices flowing on all of the different responses that people have to dangerous and extreme political situations so let's do that fleeing the country um Fleeing the country is uh, is something that, in certain circumstances, is the absolute wisest thing that you can possibly do. But it's not just about fleeing the country. There are also times when simply fleeing the locality is the best thing that you can do. And in fact, in the United States right now, we have a very high, uh, a pretty shockingly high amount of internal, quote unquote, internal refugees. And that's about to get a lot worse given a, uh, a, a couple of recent Supreme Court decisions. Um, but in the last few years, we have witnessed a pretty unique, um, I wouldn't say unprecedented, but certainly locally uh, unheard of, uh, increase in, uh, let's call it the gap, uh, a gap in, uh, in, in differences of basic civil expectations from state to state. There have been a whole bunch of American states 
that have swung very, very far in a particular uh, political direction, um, often centering around a particular minority or disempowered group. The one that's been in the news the most over the last couple of days has been homeless people or houseless people, depending on the terminology that you wish to use. Um, the Supreme Court recently, uh, just the last couple of days, uh, passed a decision uh, that would allow for states to criminalize the act of sleeping outside, um, which, by the way, includes sleeping in your car. So it's not just people who are sleeping, like, literally on the street. It also means that if you sleep in your car, uh, uh, you could also be charged criminally. It, it, that is that has now been decided as constitutional. Now, what that means is that some states are going to pass laws that are going to criminalize sleeping outside, and other states will not. So you can see how this illustrates what I was talking about just a couple seconds ago, this gap in basic civil understanding from state to state. Now, given that the United States is a federation of states, there has always been a lot of variance between states. There have always been weird rules, but for the most part, there were basic assumptions that once the, once the country got on the same page as certain issues, that it would be the same in every place. But that is increasingly not the case, which of course ties us back to the discussion of fleeing. A lot of homeless people are going to be fleeing to other states by any means necessary in the near future. This is not the first time this has happened, but again, this is a pretty major one. There are going to be cities, there are going to be entire states where homelessness is criminalized to the degree that if you cannot find a way to make money and get yourself off the street, which is incredibly hard to do in America, um, we see that reflected in, uh, in, in numerous studies, that people once people get onto the street in the United States, it's incredibly hard to bounce back from that. There are a number of things that happen that lead to cycles that keep you basically trapped in a state of homelessness. Very common, unfortunately. But in some states, you could now go to jail, and often in those same states that are likely to pass these rules, it is also legal for people in jail and in prison to be used as de facto slave labor. There are a number of states where uh, it is legal to charge you for basic necessities while you are in prison. And given that you're in prison, the only way that you can make money is by doing whatever work the prison wardens want to give you. And they are legally allowed to pay you incredibly, incredibly low rates. So you basically end up having to work all the time on whatever they want you to work on so that you can buy your necessities. It's functionally slave labor. Now, if you put those two things together, you can see what is shaping up. That in certain areas of the United States, there will be an incentive to uh, arrest and imprison homeless people, force them into labor, and also that there will be an incentive to, you know, make sure that more poor people become homeless so that they can get arrested and they can be scooped up as free labor, free or extremely cheap labor. It's a pretty horrible, um, a, 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 a pretty horrible uh, thing to imagine. And this is a real thing that is currently in the works across the United States. And there are going to be a lot of Americans who are, instead of risking being put into slave labor, as a prisoner, instead of risking being uh, a convicted criminal with a mark on their record, on their public record for the rest of their lives, will simply flee to another area, even if it is dangerous, even if they have to use money that they would otherwise have used to get off the street. And I don't think you can blame people for fleeing in that situation. I don't think you can blame people for migrating somewhere else. But it's a new a uh, problem that we're going to have to think about. I want to think. I want to talk about another example. Okay. Um, on this channel, I talk about trans issues all the time. 
right now in the United States, there is an incredible amount of controversy centering uh, around uh, the existence of trans people. There are people who uh, truly believe that trans people uh, should not be allowed to exist, that their public presence should be functionally criminalized, and that they should be excised from access to medical care. Uh, as of earlier this week, the Supreme Court has announced that they are going to be uh, taking a case that will decide the legality of outright banning gender-affirming care. We currently have a uh, very strong conservative majority on the Supreme Court, with a number of those conservatives being uh, far-right. There is a real chance in the future that it will be deemed on the federal level, constitutional for states to outright ban uh, gender-affirming care for trans people, which would not only uh, uh, be a act of elimination towards trans people, but also for those who are too afraid to call it what it is, it would represent the creation of a second class category for people based on an intrinsic trait. It is a, it's a, it's a bad state of affairs to be in. Now, if you're a member, if you happen to be a member of the trans community, you probably right now know one or more people who are already refugees in this way. People who have fled some of the most extreme states. Florida, Tennessee, Texas are some of these exam are some of the examples. North Carolina. Um, these are all states, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Utah has gotten really bad. These are all states uh, that have passed some form to varying degrees, some very, very extreme like Florida, others uh, slightly less extreme, um, but still quite extreme. Uh, they have passed laws restricting access to care, creating a legal underclass that trans people are shoved into. Um, and there is a large amount of people taking advantage of the ability to move from state to state, even if it's expensive and dangerous, to do so, to flee, to leave their area where the laws have gone against them, where they are not, uh, they do not have the representation necessary to protect their own livelihood. Now, there are a lot of people who would say, well, don't you think that it's never going to solve the problem if people don't stay and fight? And while there is some truth in that, there is also the fact that what are you supposed to do if you belong to a group that is a super minority, okay? If you are if you are a trans person, there are lots of other trans people out there on the broad in the big picture, but on a pure statistical level, trans people represent a small, small portion of the voter base. And if a significant enough political faction decides that you're the enemy and decides that you deserve to be uh, persecuted, they can do that. And you don't have a whole lot of, you know, democratic recourse for that, which means that you often have to make a tough decision. Do I stay here and struggle? Do I risk uh, criminalization? Or do I flee to somewhere else? And more and more people are making the decision to flee elsewhere. And I don't think that that is a bad idea at all. In fact, I support it as much as I can. Uh, I support it because you can't live your life to the fullest when you are trying to fight an impossible uphill battle. However, sometimes there's no choice. Sometimes people do not have a way to escape for one reason or another. And uh, that calculus, that equation becomes more difficult to solve the harder that it becomes to flee. Moving from state to state 
is difficult. It's a financial burden. It's a big risk. You risk disrupting any networks that you have. Um, you risk going into an area that you don't uh, uh, that you don't know anything about. You might not have the the physical capabilities to flee successfully or easily. Uh, moving from state to state is is hard, but there are no laws that say that you can't leave one state. If you decide, hey, I'm going to go uh, to, uh, to California now, you can do that. Nobody can stop you. You don't even have to, there's no border checkpoints even. You just go. Now, of course, there have been some strange developments uh, with regard to uh, abortion that might threaten that, but for the time being, there are no laws that can stop you from moving from state to state, which means that this, the fleeing a state in the United States is a much easier calculus than uh, fleeing a country. Which brings us to this whole discussion around fleeing the country. Fleeing the country is a massive, massive question. It is not even in the same ballpark as fleeing a state within the Union. Not only are there uh, an unimaginable amount of layers of arcane uh, immigration and asylum laws, but you also have to consider whether the place that you're going to is going to be any better. And that is a very difficult question for a lot of people who might be in this position. Um, people often like to talk about uh, fleeing to Canada, but Canada uh, is very tightly tied to American politics in a lot of ways. And trends in American politics tend to carry over into Canadian politics, which means that it might be better for you, but there also might be the risk that you go there and find yourself facing some of the same risks. People talk about going to Europe, and it's very funny the way that Americans talk about Europe, as if Europe isn't a totally spotty uh, uh, spread of a bunch of different countries, some of which are virulently uh, uh, discriminatory. Uh, not, a, not, not necessarily even just to uh, racial or, or uh, uh, gender categories, but to the concept of, of foreigners generally. You have to think about that very heavily. Additionally, there are massive financial burdens involved with leaving a country and trying to gain access to another country. Many countries require you to go through a, a very difficult approval process that you are not guaranteed to do and that might require you to have a certain amount of money in order to do that. And if you're in a desperate situation already, you might not have the ability to flee in that way. There are also things like language barriers to be considered. And on top of all of that, there is, of course, physical ability. There are a lot of people who are disabled, who rely on medication, or, or who um, otherwise uh, struggle with various aspects of, the, uh, of an immigration process, who might really have very few options with regard to fleeing to another country. Kenneth Allen Cook says, moving to England or Ireland or France or Germany might be okay, except <laughs> England and Ireland, well, Ireland's a little better than England, but England right now is in the middle of the exact same, if not arguably worse, uh, anti-trans uh, uh, hate movement that is going on here. They're, they're tied, they're deeply tied. The ties between the anti-trans movement in America and the anti-trans movement in the UK is like this. They're like tied together, like literally financially, and it's the same orgs pushing this stuff. So yeah, it might not necessarily be the right answer. Um, it might be, and you might have no choice. What I'm trying to get at here at this point is that this is a very heavy decision. And I think people should keep their minds open to it, but realistic, okay? There have been a lot of people sort of flippantly discussing fleeing the country. 
but it really is not a flippant issue. Especially, I mean, come on, we just witnessed Joe Biden, the President of the United States, pass an insanely restrictive immigration act. And he's not the only one worldwide that's doing this. Uh, Anti-immigrant sentiment worldwide is, uh, there's a lot of it. There's also things like, uh, things that I've, I've thought about personally. What would happen if I needed to flee this country? Well, I have, I, I am a, I have a little found family, okay? Me and my, my partners and our dog. Getting all of us to be able to safely immigrate would be incredibly difficult. It would be very hard for us to find a way to do that. For all of, all of us to be able to do it together seems even harder. And that means that the, the, the question of fleeing means that it's possible that we, we could be separated, that we could, uh, uh, we could not be able to do it together. And that is almost unthinkable. It is un it, it's unthinkable for me to think, to, to go, I, I can't even imagine where we would have to be for me to even consider that. It would have to be, there's no, literally no other option. Like, the thought of being like, okay, we're, we're going two and two to different places. Let's meet up again. Let's find a way to stay in touch. What that would even mean is horrifying to even think about. It would have to be truly dire. And I really want to hope that we never get to that point. That said, I do think that there are certain, that it is, it is the type of thing that could be possible in the future. I have seen the rhetoric against trans people, for example, in this country. I see it firsthand. You guys, let me just give you an example. I made one little tiny short the other day talking about Donald Trump lying a whole bunch. Almost all of the comments that I got on that were people being transphobic to me. I didn't say anything about trans people. I didn't say anything. I wasn't even mean to Donald Trump. All I said was that he was lying a ton. And the video was actually criticizing Biden for not being able to respond to it. And that hit uh, the Trump sphere on the internet. And the response was virulent transphobia. Okay? The amount of transphobia I've experienced just on the internet generally it is really bad out there on that front, okay? So I know where the anti-trans movement is at and what they want to do and what they think is okay to say and what they talk about. We've seen the talking heads publicly acknowledge what they want to do. So I don't think it is smart to rule out the possibility that things could get really, really, really bad in the near future, especially if the, uh, the wheels are thrown off by Donald Trump's second term and a project like Project 2025. But with that in mind, I don't think we can just jump to flee the country. And I think that it's, it can be a little hurtful for uh, public figures of all stripes to jump to that uh, when the reality is that it would be devastating for the people who most would need to flee. It would be perhaps irreparably devastating or impossible. I'm not saying that people shouldn't think about it. They should, but I don't think we should tra take it lightly. And I think we should acknowledge that the state of the United States right now is much less likely to be one of needing to flee the nation, the country, so much as it is people needing to flee to better and safer areas of the United States. And I really want to encourage people to pay attention and, uh, and, and focused 
on that aspect. Especially if you're a member of, of, a, of a queer minority group or, or any minority group, to be honest. That there is strength in community. And that if we spend our time uh, with panic responses instead of with more focused and realistic strategies, we often will neglect things that will actually save lives. If we help people get out of red states, for example, let's say trans people all across the country and allies to trans people and family members of trans people and partners of trans people, if we all work together and we start getting trans people out of red states, that means that there's a bunch of living, thriving, powerful trans people living in a safe state. And from that position, all of those people can continue to work together to save more people and to fix the problems that are existing elsewhere, to save the people who might otherwise not be able to get out, to remove that as a problem entirely and create the potential for ultimately perhaps changing that place. I'm not talking about creating a trans state. I, I, I live in Seattle, okay? There are a lot of trans people here, okay? And uh, I couldn't go to the trans pride event this year. Uh, two of my partners were sick and, uh, and I was extremely exhausted. Um, so I wasn't able to go this year. Last year, I met just spontaneously two separate families who came to Seattle specifically as red state refugees. They self-described as having fled their home state to come to Seattle because they didn't think they're themselves or in one case, one case was the person I was talking to directly, the other one was a mother of a trans woman. Both of them came to Seattle just by chance. One, I met one of them in line for a food truck and the other one I met just milling about in the park. They fled because their home state was not safe for them anymore, because they could not get the medical care they needed and because they were facing discrimination. This is a very real thing. There are a lot of trans people in this area. We're not like a, a, a the, it's not like there's only trans people here, but there are a lot and we can look out for each other and care for each other and talk to each other. And it's, uh, it's very powerful. And yes, uh, another example, another place, Portland. Um, Portland passed some really incredible trans healthcare legislation, which means that trans people can, uh, regardless of your income, get the help that you need. Obviously, trans people aren't the only people uh, at risk. Um, we just discussed homeless, the homeless situation changing in America. We just discussed, uh, we've mentioned the whole immigration situation in America. And of course, there are all kinds of racial issues in America. And that might be a whole other thing that, has, that, that, that is going to change in the near future. Right now, there is a very particular cultural uh, hate movement that is targeting trans people to the point that even today, uh, the Biden administration capitulated to the right. What I'm trying to say here is that I want people to stop taking the, the, the conversation around fleeing the country lightly and spend more time thinking about how we can effectively help people get to safety within the country. Fleeing the country is nightmarishly difficult and not an option, just straight up not an option for most people. If it comes to it where that is the only option left, you know that I will be on the front lines doing whatever I can to figure out how to help people. You know that. That's how I, that's what I want to do. Um, but I want people to be uh, thoughtful and strategic about this. It's important, genuinely important. It is life-savingly important that people talk about this issue effectively, thoughtfully, 
and compassionately. And I really want to encourage people to do that. I, I don't want to mischaracterize anybody, and I don't think anybody's been, like, really evil. I'm not doing, I'm not putting out, like, a call-out thread here or whatever. I just want people to think about it a little bit differently. And I really, really, really want people to start thinking about how we can actually help. One of the biggest ways is plugging yourself into networks where uh, uh, people's GoFundMes uh, for moving expenses and things like that where you can find them, where you can find friends of friends. Anybody who follows me on Twitter will know that I have at multiple times boosted the GoFundMes of friends of friends that I have verified people that I know. I know those people because I am connected to people. I know somebody who knows somebody. And through just my Twitter alone, we've been able to, me and my community and the extended communities attached to my community have been able to make sure that people get what they need to survive. That's really important. Really, really important. It's so weird to genuinely be considering going stealth when I never considered that an option before. Odd feelings of both pride and fear. Being trans is weird. Um, yeah, it's something I've thought about. A couple years ago, um, the state of uh, the state of Washington uh, made it possible to have the non-binary gender marker on your ID and I am non-binary um, and ever since I thought about that it's been something I've thought about as to whether or not it would be a good idea or not it's super cool I think it's awesome that you can just go and say I'm non-binary and they'll give you a little X on your gender marker I think that's amazing um, and really cool, but I also go, oh my god, in this current atmosphere, that could really hurt you somewhere. You know? Even if it's harmless, it could put you in danger. And it makes you scared when there's an, when there is, a, to a certain degree, when there is a, uh, an atmosphere of hate, like there is building in this country right now, like there has been building in this country. Um, yeah it's tough and a lot of these considerations are really difficult to make but uh, I want people to be thinking about this stuff not in a doomer way in a, in a problem solving way I want people to keep their eyes open and help where they can I want people to keep their minds open and and put their unique knowledge and skills to work. Um, if we do that, we can make it through anything. I truly do believe that. I want you I want I want people to understand that. I truly believe in the power of people to survive nearly anything when they work together, when they bond together and are able to, to combine their talents. It's incredible what we can endure and what we can uh, evade, what we can spot and react to, what we can adapt to. Not only that, we can make it good. It's, it, it is possible. I think it is likely that we are going to face dark times in the future, okay, really dark times. Uh, if Trump gets in, it is not going it is very very likely going to be a very difficult time for especially trans people but for gay people for black people for for people who are undocumented for children of immigrant families for people of color of all types for native americans it is going to be a tough time it was before it's very likely to be dark times in the near future but I don't think that the times have to be uh, the darkest. I think that we can still find ways to thrive. I think that we can find ways to counteract the darkness. I believe that we can make pockets of incredible beauty and warmth, and that that beauty and warmth can affect the world beyond, that it can functionally fight back and make the dark times shorter and not as dark. But 
we can't always control the way that the world flows. We can't, uh, we often can't control it. What, what we, whatever, what people are experiencing right now, looking at the disaster in the Democratic Party, a lot of people are experiencing a sense of powerlessness, a sense of powerlessness that I have been acutely aware of in my own life for a very long time. The, uh, uh, in fact, it was a lot of what got me started in streaming. What got me motivated to stream was experiencing uh, utter abandonment by, the, by a government that uh, I thought was at least marginally supposed to help. You know, I lived in a liberal state and I thought, well, you know, liberal states, the government is there to try and like help you when you're when things are bad and they just didn't it was a disaster so many people were left behind people had to fend for themselves they had to make connections themselves and find a way to survive when there was no help um and you know people right now are looking and going oh my god the Democratic Party is ignoring everybody. It's ignoring everything. They're plowing towards giving this to Trump again, despite saying that Trump is the most dangerous person in the world. They're going to give it to him. And nobody can do anything about it. Except you can. It's just not through the Democratic Party. It's not through, uh, you know, endlessly poll watching. It can be useful to pay a little bit of attention to that stuff, to know where things are going so you can calculate. But it can't be your primary method. Uh, when it comes to fleeing the country, that's a huge question, and people should definitely think about it. It should definitely be something that people uh, don't close their mind to, but we also collectively, as, as all of these people who are interested in politics and talking about all this stuff, uh, we need to be real about it, and we need to not uh, you know, only think about the most extreme options. We need to think about what we can do to prevent it from being necessary. There is still so much left for us to do. And a lot of it is going to require us to use our mental capabilities to figure out solutions. Anyway, thank you so very much for hearing me out on this issue. And if you enjoyed this, please make sure you subscribe and leave a comment down below because I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you.